welcome people of Adlington and Hello. other parishes to episode two of Buckets, Buckets for, for Pockets. Pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Derek. Hello, Cheers. you, sir. Slauncha, Lachaim, Shalom and Namaste. Prost. Prost. <laughs> All right, now, this week's subtitle uh, is Weasels in, in space. space, or as Derek was, would like to announce it properly, Weasels in Space. You see? see now no, I've got to come up with an, another graphic <laughs> for that. All right, so, but t- would you like to explain to the ladies and gentlemen what the subjects are and what's, what you've got in mind? Okay, so, yes, essentially the broad outline sketch was going to be space in general, so something a bit more spe- specific. So I'd pick something within space, pick something within natural history, specifically animals. So right. I, I basically decided upon um, a nice little idea of um, explaining the scale uh, oh. of the solar system and indeed our Earth um, moon system. Yes. Well, uh, and as my good friend Brendan, uh, amateur quantum physicist uh, and pub raconteur, described it to me, he said, this, knocking on the table, is basically mostly nothing. There's, yes. more, there's more nothing than something. That's right. He's what? absolutely 100% right. Jesus. Also, another thing that will rock your brain and rack mine when I heard it is, you can't actually touch anything. It is physically impossible oh, for right. two solid items I've to I've had touch. enough of this <laughs> madness. What do you mean? You can't actually touch anything. When I feel like I'm touching this table, I'm not touching this table. There's a minimum of a one angstrom gap between any two physical items. Because you can't touch anything because of the, the, the uh, electro repulsion between the atoms. So you can't actually touch, touch atom to atom. I've experienced repulsion many, many... <laughs> Let me let me jump in on Derek's science uh, hour by <laughs> by go by, go go by adopting a little levity oh, in this uh, because uh, oh by the way I must mention this week's sponsors uh, ah, Derek yes now clearly our regular brand partner is the Top Spinners Adlington the greatest establishment in Adlington that's the punchline that's beautiful <laughs> uh, but we also have uh, secondary sponsors this week the Little Chippy oh love the Little Chippy love the Little Chippy yeah Glenys nope, 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 Glynis et al. Eileen mm. from the pub. Glynis mm. was in last night, actually. Mm-hmm. God bless her. Mm. Um, oh, and, and this week's um, tertiary sponsor is uh, the 10 Miles 10 Pubs sponsored walk for Bolton Hospice. And there's a link to the Just Giving page running along your screen now. I don't know how I'm going to insert that as a live <laughs> link, but I'll put a link on the Facebook. It's a good idea. A joke I thought of years ago. You know, you see uh, Isaac Newton on ten pound notes or whatever it is, uh, twenty pound. He was a physicist, wasn't he? I believe he, so. Yeah, dis- among, among other things. Yeah. But miserable. Have you seen his? He's put very, very serious man. Yes. That's why they call it gravity. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> These are the jokes. Over to Derek. <laughs> right. Okay. So, jumping straight in, the uh, the the fact that I want to elaborate on here and, and go into a wee bit is just the distance from Earth to the Moon. Yeah. Um, it's our nearest celestial body. It's our close partner to Earth. It's a hop, skip, and a jump away. It's a hop, skip, and a jump away. You know, um, but the thing is, we consider it. It's close, and it is close. You know, talking in you know the terms of the solar system. Yes. But some of the fast, one of the fastest things that humans have ever created, still took three days to get there and three days to come back. See, now you put it like that, mm. doesn't seem quite so close. It's not. That's the thing. In fact, the distance between the Moon and the Earth. You can comfortably fit in every single planet in the solar system right next to each other, <clears throat> and there's still a gap that is massive. I find it's, that hard to believe, sir. In fact, it's true. I deny it. <laughs> I think maybe some kind of illustration is in order. I, I, it would be rude not to. In that case, coming up on your screens now is an illustration of precisely this magical thing. Yes. <clears throat> Bet- <laughs> between the Earth and the, our moon. Yes. You could fit all the other planets of the solar system with yes. a bit left over for another Earth. Uh, easily more than that. Possibly another Uranus, which is, <laughs> which is not a small planet in and of itself. Is it not? No. I have no idea. We're not going there. That's... So, for example, Jupiter, 1,300 Earths can fit in that. This is just insane. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking it's a bit of a schlep from Adlington to Farnworth <laughs> yeah, to see my right. mum. Yeah. 20 minutes on the A6. Time I threw in a little of my uh, comedy. Levity. Levity. Which is, it's not actually that funny, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, Galileo, because you know, I'm, I'm a heliocentrist, yes. as, as I'm sure most of, <laughs> m- most right-thinking people are, but, 
But Galileo, I mean, not to mention Copernicus, I think, was the first guy. Yes, that's right. That, it that, was the Copernican view. The Copernican view. Yes. That trips the Copernican view. <laughs> that's it. The book is for pockets. Copernican view. Oh, it's not easy. Uh, it's not that you This week's Tom Twister. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, and he, he basically, he, he insisted, uh, Galileo, this is, that uh, the Earth went around the Sun and not the other way around. That's correct. And also that the Earth revolved, rotated on its own axis yeah. whilst doing it. Yes. That's a hell of a pool shot, by the it way. Is, it is. Speaking of buckets for pockets, <laughs> yeah. imagine doing that on that. Anyway, this was at the time of the Spanish Inquisition, or it was just the Inquisition. Yes. And uh, this, it, unless he took it back, it, 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 was, it was for the hijack, but they didn't. They basically, it stripped him of all his honours, mm-hmm. locked him up for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. What? That's what religion gets you. Mum, if you're watching this... <laughs> You and your Jesus. <laughs> so anyway, next, uh, the next half is all about uh, weasels. <laughs> Amazingly, weasels, well, you well, say? I, I, I do say weasels. Yes. Um, so weasels, weasels in general, um, the weasel family, the mustelids. Um, a collective noun for a group of weasels, a boogle. Wow, I would not have got that. No, a, a boogle. B o o g l e, a boogle of weasels. A few more uh, collective nouns, Derek. Go for it. Because I, I love this. I love collective nouns. A cauldron of bats. Wow. A cauldron. I mean, because they're spooky. Oh, they always use them in this cave. Cauldron. I didn't well, know they that are in caves, yeah. Thank cauldron. Yeah. Uh, and this is one of my favourites because it's full of joy and love mm-hmm. and almost a, almost in a celestial way. Go. What's a group of larks called? <sighs> ah. See, uh, I knew he'd know oh, one of these. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> no, no. Victory. No, I'm, I'm, go on. Victory to Timmy. It's not a battle. No. Nope. <laughs> but it's an exultation of love. I love it. Isn't that beautiful? That is Sorry, beautiful. An exultation. 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 And lo, thy, thou shalt be exalted by a yeah. sky full of... I know a few, I know a few collective oh, names. Yes. Yeah. Go on, right, we're going to carry on with this one. Um, <laughs> what's a cle- what is the collective name for apes? Oh, I've got a note on this. and In fact, I've got a gag for it. <laughs> is it a shrewdness? It is a shrewdness. This? What a, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> what about owls? A parliament. A parliament of owls. This is great. Uh, yeah. ah, oh. ri- rhinoceroses. Uh, a clash? Crash. A crash. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, this is how I got most of my O levels. Sheer guess what? Anyway, no. Yeah, very but it's, good. It's funny yeah. how, because Derek is at his pretty fingers. Like, yeah. uh, I started off with an army of frogs, you know. Mm. I think frogs, army. Well, they're in green, back yeah, green, and that's you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. But an army? I don't yeah. think so. No. But then, this is what tickled me. A group of lemurs, which are in the monkey family, is called a conspiracy. It is a conspiracy <gasps> of lemurs. Oh, sorry, I should have given you the opportunity. No, it's but, fine, it's fine. No, I, I do like that one as it's well. Great. So, yeah. And, and yeah. then an a, a shrewdness of apes. Yeah. And my, my thought was, monkeys? But how are we attributing such highly evolved mental processes, such as conspiracies and shrewdness, mm. to monkeys? It's, we're the ones giving them collective nouns, not the That's other way around. Right, yeah. Bloody monkeys. <laughs> I know. Anyway, sorry. Pay sorry. peanuts. Pay peanuts? What do you... What do we... Well, the thing I like about weasels is not only are they the smallest predator in the world, they're also one of the most voracious, obviously, because they have to keep hunting right. to, to survive. But not only that, they can take down things that are huge in comparison. How? What? Examples? Examples? Well, for example, a stoat, which is basically just a slightly bigger weasel, right. can, can kill a rabbit, a fully grown rabbit. Okay, so <laughs> this means me a, a great idea for a fan, fantastic new show on Channel 4, uh, Animal Gladiators, where we pitch nice. different animals against mm. each other in the ring of death. Nice. <clears throat> so like a, so sto- a bit like the Colosseum of Rome when it's but, heyday. A bit like the Colosseum of Rome <laughs> in its heyday. <laughs> A weasel against, say, I don't know, a giraffe, for example. <laughs> get, a, get a polar bear against, <laughs> against a, a poodle. You know, that I think would make great TV. <laughs> so, thank you, and you're welcome yeah. for that. <laughs> I've been asked by our legal team <laughs> to point out that the illustration of last week's uh, teenage Costa Rican hookers was uh, slanderous, or oh, libelous because it's published, Yes. Uh, libelous, and they and, we, and we're obliged now to make a correction. They were actually from Colombia, not Costa Rica. That's right. Well, I think that was an, an exceptionally erudite uh, exposition of not only the animal kingdom in general, but weasels in particular. Oh, well.
And mustelids, you say? Mustelids, sir. Mustelids, mm. which sounds like uh, a, a, an Armenian drink greeting. <laughs> you know, shalom, slancha, mustelids. Mustelid. So, on that note, mustelids. mustelids. <laughs> See you all next time, everybody. Bye-bye. Buckets for pockets. Buckets for pockets.